Shock Suspense Stories. Fall Guy. The police sirens shriek to a stop far below in the street canyon, echoing off the dark, silent building. Danny leaned over the parapet, grimacing. In a few minutes, they'd be coming up after him, shackling him with the shiny handcuffs and dragging him back to the hellhole where he spent ten miserable years, back to prison. Well, he'd had none of that. Danny shook his head. The flashing neon light from the bar and grill sign that ran vertically up the face of the tenement reflecting on his perspiring face. He screamed down at the uniformed figures pouring from the squad car. Not me, coppers. You'll never take me back. Never. Danny climbed onto the parapet. Someone in the street below pointed up at Danny's neon illuminated figure outlined against the night sky and shouted, There he is on the roof. Come on, let's get him. He's going to jump. Danny looked down at the gathering sea of upturned faces. The sign running away down the building face flashed on and off, first bathing him in its red-orange light, then erasing him into blackness. He shook his head. It's all over. There's nothing left to live for. No nothing. Danny stood there, teething crazily. He thought of Helen shrieking painfully in the bar below with the knife gash obliterating her once lovely face in one jagged crimson smear. And he thought of the money, $93,000, waiting quietly in that safety deposit box in the bank vault. Waiting, waiting. Waiting for whom, Danny giggled. What was that name? If only he'd been able to remember that name. The name he'd given them when he rented the box. All this wouldn't have happened. Danny looked around. Figures were spilling out onto the roof now. Hold it, Jansen. Don't be a fool, Danny. Stay away, coppers. Danny made a movement as if to jump. The policemen stopped coming. Take one more step toward me and down I go, coppers. Go ahead, sucker. Jump. You'll save the state a lot of money. $93,000. It was a lot of money. Danny stood there in the flashing light of the bar's neon sign, remembering why he needed so much money. Marry you, Danny? Don't be silly. You haven't a dime. When I marry you, it'll be to somebody with plenty of dough. I'll get dough, Helen. Honest. Danny remembered how Helen had laughed at him. You? <laughs> get dough? Don't be ridiculous. Where can a two-bit hotel clerk get that kind of dough I want? Where could you get, say, $100,000? I'll get it, Helen. You'll see. Then will you marry me? How she smiled at him, patting his cheek. Baby, I'd marry anybody with a hundred grand. Anybody. <laughs> Even you. I love you, Helen. I love you so much. I'd do anything for you. Danny teetered on the parapet. The uniformed figures moved cautiously toward him. You're going back to stud, Jansen. Slashing that thing will put you away for a long time. You're not putting me anywhere, copper. Stay back. Danny remembered the day the dapper-looking guy had come into the hotel with a little black bag under his arm. Just sign here, sir. That's room oh, 609. I'd like to put this bag into the hotel safe. He remembered how he'd taken the bag and how he almost dropped it as the dapper guy announced it. Careful with that, son. There's close to $100,000 in cash in that bag. Yeah, 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 yes. The dapper guy had been a dealer in diamonds. He'd come to town to make some purchases for clients. Danny put the bag into the hotel safe. $100,000. <laughs> You're sure that will be safe there, son? Danny smiled. Thinking of Helen, beautiful, desirable Helen. Oh, oh yes, sir. Perfectly safe. Good. <sighs> Danny remembered how he'd taken the bag from the safe and rushed across town to a bank. I'd like to rent a safety deposit box, please. Of course, sir. If you would give me your name. That was it. That was the only thing Daddy could not remember now. He'd given a false name so that he were caught. The money would be safe. Waiting. My name is, uh, Brad Gilbert. And your address, Mr. Gilbert? Then he'd gone to Helen. You said you'd marry me if I got a hundred grand. Well, I've got it. What? Oh, can it, Daddy? I'm not in the mood for jokes. 
This is no joke, Helen. I stole $100,000 and I hid it in a safety deposit box under a phony name. And you expect me to believe that story? You'll believe it when the cops start looking for me, Helen. Just promise me one thing. Sure, Danny. Anything. Promise me you'll wait for me. They'll catch up with me and I'll have to do some time. Promise me you'll wait till I get out. Sure, Danny. Sure. Danny remember the cops coming to his room. Get your coat, Jansen. There is a little matter of a hundred grand missing from a hotel safe. We would like to talk over with you. Their incessant questioning. What did you do with the dough, Jansen? Tell us where you hid it, Danny. Well, I forgot, Coppers. His sentencing. Because you have persistently refused to divulge where you have hidden the money you stole, I sentence you to the maximum jail term allowed by law, Daniel Jansen. Fifteen years in the state penitentiary. And Daddy remembered Helen's last moments with him before he was taken away. Tell me the name, Danny. The name you used when you rented the box. Sorry, Helen. You wait for me. With time off for good behavior, I'll be out in ten years. Then it'll be clover for us. Daddy stood on the parapet. Better come down, Daddy. Stay back, coppers, stay back. Daddy remembered those miserable years in jail, counting the endless days and saying the name over and over in his mind. The name he'd used when he rented the safety deposit box. The name he'd forgotten. Brad Gilbert, Brad Gilbert, Brad Gilbert. And then, that long-awaited day, the day the prison gate swung open and he passed through them a free man. Good luck, Daddy. Thanks, Warden. For ten years, Daddy waited for that moment. Helen was out there, outside the gates, waiting for him. Baby! Let's go, Daddy. Let's go pick up the dough and head for Mexico. He remembered the drive back to town, to the bank. Yes, sir. I read it a safety deposit box several years ago. I paid for it in advance. I'd like to have it open. He remembered how the bank clerk had handed him the form. Of course, sir. Just sign your name. M -m 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 my name? It was crazy. Every day for ten years he'd said that name to himself. But there, in the bank, with the clerk waiting and Helen waiting at the dotted line on the form waiting, Danny drawn a blank, a complete loss of memory. Danny! Sign the name! The name you used! Oh, oh, oh my god! I, I, I can't remember it! Danny remembered how Helen had pleaded with him. Think, Daddy, think! What did it sound like? Was it a common name? A, a uh, ball player? Shut up, Helen! The clerk! Just sign your name, sir! Is there anything wrong? Danny made a lame excuse. I'll be back. I forgot some important papers that I want to put in. Of course, sir. Then he walked for hours. He and Helen. She prodding him. Questioning, insulting, almost screaming at times, and he racked his tortured brain. For God's sake, Daddy, how could you forget anything as important as that? Was it Smith, Jones, Daniels? Think. No, no, lay off me, will you? They ended up tonight under the bar and grill sign. I'm hungry. Let's go in here. They'd sat in a bar at Helen Field. Ten years I've wasted waiting for a dumb creep to forget the name he used when he hit a hundred grand. For crying out loud, Helen. Have some pity on me. I'm trying. Daddy remembered how she screamed. Have pity on you? What about me? What about all the chances I passed up waiting for you? Waiting for you to get out so I could get my hands on that dough. I never gave a hoot about you. It was the dough. The dough. Oh, Helen. Look at me. I'm almost 40. What chance have I got to find another sucker? You were it! And how you pull a rotten trick like this? Think of the name, Daddy! Th shut up, Helen! I won't shut up! Make me! Make me shut up! I you said shut clean. up, Helen! And Daddy remembered picking up the serrated steak knife. Make me, you lame brain idiot! You... You... Daddy! Daddy giggled on the parapet as he remembered slashing out at Helen, slicing across her jawing mouth, and the blood spurting as the sawtooth knife cut deep. Stand back, coppers! 
She's dead, Daddy. She said something about her name before she died. What name? The light from the flashing neon sign colored Danny's face with a satanic mask. There's a hundred grand in a safety deposit box, coppers. I hid it under a phony name, and I forgot the name, do you hear? I forgot it! Better come down, Danny. Danny screamed. Not me, coppers! I ain't got nothing left to live for now! No name, no dough, no girl. Stop him! Danny leaped. His screaming echoed down into the street canyon. He smashed against the sign, clutching at the neon letters, ripping them away as he plunged. Neon ah! tubes and spoke, hissed, splintered as he fell against them. Down. And just before his sight left him and his life slipped away as he laid crushed and broken on the sidewalk. Below the sign, Danny looked up and saw the work his falling body had done. There, outlined in flashing orange against the black night, was the name Danny Forgotten. The End